So I want to, on that note, and we've spoken about the mental thing a heck of a lot, so I'm on a crusade at the moment to be a better person, and I'm busy reading a book at the moment that is called The Outward Mindset. Bear me up, I think that you're going to fall off your chair. If you haven't got a mind like me, that's a problem, but that's neither here nor there. And the premise of the whole book is, and unfortunately, you bear me out here, golf and professional golfers are incredibly selfish. Please forgive me for saying so, but in fact, let me, let me level that to all professional sports men and women in general are incredibly selfish. They have to be. They have to think of number one most of the time. I understand that fully. But this book in particular is about changing your mindset to always be looking at what is good for you and instead turning that around and saying what is good for the other person. And in your particular cases, so often, it's the caddy. That's your first contact. Then the next person that you'd end up with, the scorers. The next person you'd end up with out of that circle would be, once you finished your run, is the media, etc., etc., etc. Think about your pond and the people that goes in there and all the people that you affect by your mindset. And that outward, I've got, we don't have enough time to go through the whole lot. But I'm fascinated by the writer's thinking of a mindset. I'll give you one example of what they did. They were called in, and this is a company that does billions of dollars of corporate training. And they went to a, a, a company, well, they were called by a company who end bad debt. And they taught this bad debt company, so why don't you go out and go and help the people who've got bad debt to get the money in that you need to end? How unbelievably different is that to what the thinking process normally would be for a company that rocks up at your door with a 9 millimeter and says, you owe us 1,300 bucks, give it now. This company went out with the help of the writer of this book and started helping people who were in debt to end the money instead. That is an outward thinking mindset. And often, I think that takes pressure of you to perform as a person because then you start thinking of yourself as a team rather than just one guy who's trying to do it all by himself out on the golf course. You know, just, just a couple of, uh, of, of examples of, of people that over the years that have thought different ways. Bob Charles. Now, a lot of people wouldn't, wouldn't remember, remember the name Bob Charles. He won the Open Championship in 1963. And for, for 40 years, he was the only left-hander to, to win a major, he was the first left-hander, and then it took 40 years for the second left-hander, who was to win the Masters. Mike Weir. Mike Weir, well done. Mike Weir was the next one. Everybody would think it would be Phil Mickelson or somebody like that, but Mike Weir was the next one to win. But Bob Charles was an unbelievably good putter, right? Unbelievable. He had he had the touch of a pickpocket. He was he was a genius. I promise you. And he had this beautiful, long, slow putting stroke. And he used to stand at night in front of his mirror in his room, in the hotel room. And he would stand and swing his putter. No ball, just swing the putter. And he'd watch himself and say, you are the greatest putter in the world. You're the greatest putter in the world. And in his time, he was the greatest putter in the world. In the World Match Play Championship that they used to play at Wentworth, he got to the 18th hole, he was 30 feet from the hole for two, and he played part and made a four, he was one down. So he needed to sink the putt to uh, take the match into extra time to go down the 37th hole. Par five at Wentworth. You all know the hole, I'm sure you've watched it. He sank the putt. Went down the first hole, the 37th hole, and sank a 40 foot putt to win the, to win the match. When he came back to the media, the media said that putt at the 18th was unbelievable. You know, under that kind of pressure, all the people around, the television, how did you sink that 30-foot putt? He said, you know, I had the same putt in the morning, and I left it in the hole short. So all I had to do was hit it. <laughs> how is that for a mindset? How is that for being positive? Jack Nicklaus said something that is the most amazing thing I've ever heard or read. Jack Nicklaus said at the height of his career, he never ever hit a shot until he was entirely sure in his mind that he could hit the shot that he needed to hit. How's that? 
surely you must have played shots when you stood over the board and you just hit it. You know, you think, oh, oh, I'll just hit it on the green. He pictured the shot, he visualized the shot, and never hit it until he was entirely sure. Guys, these are guys that are going back 20, 30, 40 years. The game has progressed since then. You've got to be better now than ever. There are more terrific players playing out there now than there ever were, and there are going to be more coming. I still don't believe that anybody was better than Jack Nicklaus. I believe very few are better than Gary Player and Lee Trevino and guys like that. Tiger Woods certainly was. But there are more good players now than there have ever been before in the history of the game. Okay. There also are more opportunities. We now have a fabulous tour here in South Africa. We have a fabulous tour in South America. We have a tour in Asia. We have a tour in Japan. We have a tour in Australia. We have a tour now in Canada. You have two tours in America, two tours in Europe. So you have a lot of different places to play. But it's not easy to get on those tours. It costs money. And when you go through a tour school, all that means is that giving you an opportunity to spend money. <laughs> all it means. You might make some money, but they've given you the opportunity to spend money, to go and chase that dollar. Anybody have any questions? Yes. The first year, how much is it going to cost for the player to play? Oh, first year's advice. How you, how you tour, how you eat, what, what do you guys do? What do you, what do you do in your first year to survive? Play like hell. Yeah, you practice, you practice from sun up to sundown, basically. <laughs> Can I just borrow this a second? I don't know if you saw Pat Perez. I loved the quote this week. Anybody read that? They said to Pat Perez, he's qualified to play the tour, to, to a championship. He's 12th on the rankings, so he's qualified to play. He's 41 years old, the oldest player in the field by quite a long way. And they said to him, if you won the 10 million, what would you, <laughs> how would you spend it? He said, quickly. <laughs> um, my first year on tour, I was very fortunate. I had some mentors. There was a guy called John Bland and Hugh Barkey. They were my mentors. So when I arrived in Europe my first time, they helped me to go and stay in that hotel, play there, play practice rounds with me and all those kinds of things. That doesn't much happen nowadays. But on the European tour, there are a lot of South Africans and they will look after the young guys there. They will take them to this hotel. If it's in South Africa, I don't play on the Sunshine Tour anymore, but I can remember that happening, the same thing for me on the Sunshine Tour. So there are people, and you, I'm sure you've got some friends or you know somebody that would be prepared to be your mentor. So you should look for a mentor on tour. It doesn't mean to say the guy's gonna tell you how to play. He's just gonna say, stay in this hotel. If you're gonna play down at the coast, make sure you play before seven o'clock because the wind normally gets up quite late and all the guys are, that are not really serious about golf are out for their practice round at 10 o'clock. Four million people take you seven hours to play a practice round. Hopefully you'll learn early that you go play your practice rounds early in the morning. All those kinds of things can come from a mentor. Wherever these, wherever these tours are, wherever you're going to go, there are mentors to happen uh, that will help you. I can remember 